Praise the Lord. It's a delight to be here and um, get to share some things with us. Can we lift our hands and give him thanks? Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost for a few minutes and then we commence this teaching proper. Just pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Just pray in the Holy Ghost that there will be clarity this evening. There will be clarity this evening in the name of Jesus. Everything that we need to know, everything that we require for success in 2024, is made available and granted unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Every heart is open, every mind is open to receive God's word with clarity, with clarity, with clarity in the mighty name of Jesus. Manto Socteria Barade Sonteli Gavela Ereketo Sombra Mando Borodo Shentelia Gavade Meneko Santelia Gavande Coporia Barada Gadiga. We give you thanks this evening. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Say it louder, amen. amen. Please help me welcome the person to your left and to your right and say you're welcome to church. It's a delight to have you attend the first brothers and sisters hangout for 2024. And you can have your seat in God's presence. I want to appreciate the leadership of brothers and sisters hangout and um, celebrate them for the good work that they are doing. Can we appreciate them with a hand clap this evening? I could show. All right. This year we said we are going to enjoy a lot of um, new things. We looked at Isaiah chapter 60. Can we turn to Isaiah chapter 60? Um, we saw a lot of bountiful things that we will enjoy in 2024. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Can we read together, everybody? Want to go? Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Can we read together? Want to go? Arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Can we jump to verse 4? Verse 4. What does verse 4 say? Lift up your eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee, thy sons shall come from afar. Verse 5. Praise the Lord. So, we are trying to say that there are spiritual laws that are very key for success in life. And one of these laws is what we call positioning. Another word for positioning is alignment. There is nobody that succeeds in life without positioning. Nobody is successful. If you check your success so far, you will see that it, mo it must be because you positioned yourself in a certain way at a particular time is the reason why you are successful today. Take, for example, if you are good at a business, somebody introduced you to that business. Somebody called your attention to it, or you met with somebody online, or one way or the other, there was a form of alignment with a person, or you were at a place, and that's the reason why you enjoyed the blessings. That you Some of us, is because of the school that we went to. Because you were in that school, you now met a particular person in that school. Please come and talk. Come and talk. Praise the Lord. So just as Pastor was saying, he said that um, for every success that we have at the moment, whether in our businesses or in our spiritual life or in our relationship, it means that you have a mentor. There is somebody that you are looking out you are looking at as a mentor. Take for example, he mentioned business. There is no one that is doing well in his or her business presently that doesn't have a mentor. And that mentor is the person you run to whenever you have issues with the business. Take for example, I, I will use someone here as an example. This person in his business, what does he do? He has a mentor. So whenever he has, he has issues, that's the person he goes to. Please let me appreciate Brother Deji for the impromptu. So we are trying to say that the success you have enjoyed so far, in, in fact, the reason you studied medicine or you studied nursing or whatever it is that you have studied or whatever you have is because you met somebody that in, in, in insinuated or informed you about it and led you in that direction. So positioning is very key and vital in all forms of success that you have in life. Whether people that are in the secular world or even in the spiritual world. So if you look at the spiritual world, you will say that the 
introduction of Moses into the life of Joshua informed the manifestation of the glory that manifested in his life. So the introduction of Elisha in the life of Elijah, okay, ensured that um, there was a correct turnout in his life. And the examples are quite innumerous. Let's take one of those examples. Can we take a look at Rebecca? The book of Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24 and verse 13. Genesis chapter 24 and verse 13. You are going to see something very vital here. This kind of success that exists in this scripture is in terms of who to marry, is in terms of relationship. Everyone else in verse 13 want to go. And behold, I stand there by the well of the water, and the daughters of men of the city come out to draw. Who is speaking here? The person speaking here is called Eliaza. Everybody say Eliaza. Eliaza is the main or the chief servant of um, Abraham. And he has been instructed here to get a wife for this boy. And he begins to make a prayer in verse 13. Can we go to verse 14? Can we read verse 15? Everybody want to go? And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to who? At what time did this woman come out? Everybody talk to me. At what time did, he co- did she come out? She came out at the time that this man just made the prayer. It means that she had left the house before he started what? Praying. It's not the prayer that made, he, he made her come out. She was already out. And that's why the timing was perfect. We call it the law of positioning. Who told her to go out at that time? Who told her to go to the stream at that time? Who gave that instruction? Who spoke to her heart that this is the right time you should go there and fetch water? And that thing happened perfectly. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Tap your friend and say positioning is very important. So because of this singular incident, this person joined the lineage of those that gave birth to Jesus Christ today. Just one thing. What was that thing? She was at the right place at the right time. So another definition for positioning, I said it's alignment. Another definition you can put down is being at the right place and at the right what? At the right time. Being at the right place and at the right time. Being at the right place at the right time is the simple meaning of positioning. Let me give you another story. Let's go to Luke, book of Luke, Ruth, chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1 and verse 8. Ruth chapter 1 and verse 8. Ruth chapter 1 and verse 8. Okay, everybody, let's read. Want to go? And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of each to our mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as he have dealt with the dead and with me. You know the antecedent of this story? What had happened here? Can you tell me what had happened here? Who had lost Naomi and Opha had lost what? Opa had lost their husbands. This woman came to this land with her own husband and two children. The husband is dead. The two sons are dead. What would you do? Now, if shame would not allow you to go back, when the woman now says you are free to what? What are you supposed to do? You see, positioning. When Opa went back, because people look at things being rosy, things being nice as a sign that God is there. The misalignment, if you look at this story, you will say that now me is not the right woman to what? To follow. You will say this business is not the right business to engage in. You will say this church is not the right church to go to. You will say this person is not the right person to date. If you look at physicality. No, no, look at the story. She just lost her husband, dead. As if that is not bad, bad you know. The two sons. No grandchild. That is, that looks like a terrible woman to follow. It doesn't look like a spiritual mother to follow. There is nothing about her life at this point that indicates that this is the role model that I want to build my life upon. But something was speaking to one out of the two ladies. Because she told the two of them the same thing. He said, return each to her mother's house. And she prayed for them that the Lord will deal kindly with them. I'm telling you, if it was me, if it was you, you would have nicely accepted that blessing and walked away. 
I'm talking about alignment. Being at the right place at what right time. And you not looking at physical circumstances to judge where you should be. Because if you are going to succeed in 2024, you will not look at the policies, you will not look at the physical things that you see. It has to be God on your inside speaking to you clearly to know where you should be at the right place and at the right time. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Is somebody following us here? Are you getting the point this evening? So we are talking about how certain people have been at a particular place and at a particular time and did not look at things around and they were able to get the things God ordained for them. Really, if God was in this scenario, why didn't he show up here? Was it God that spoke to her? You know, I, I always wonder when I look at that story. Let me give you one more story before we proceed. Let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 11. 2 Samuel chapter 11. You must know that Zacchaeus was equally well positioned. Where was Zacchaeus? If Zacchaeus had not climbed that tree, were there chances that he would have met Jesus? Does that tree look like a place? Zacchaeus was a rich person. Are you aware? That was why I said, anybody that wrongly, I'm going to return it for food. If you know, get money, you know, go to car. He had money. And that man in there to humble himself and climb a sick mine tree. And that positioning was the vantage point where Jesus located him and said, come down today, salvation enters your house. And you will say, I am too big to climb a tree even to see Jesus. I'm talking about being positioned correctly for success. And you can engage it in terms of business. You can engage it in terms of your academic life. You can, because you will be at a particular place. And that discussion that night will inform your GP for that semester. You can apply it to any area of your life. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Look at this. This is not a good story here. All the ones that we have seen, they were good stories. So when we looked at Rebecca, Rebecca, something prompted her that day. And she went. When it came to Ruth, something must have moved her. Away. Don't leave this woman. Say. And she became the grandmother of Jesus. She was a Moabite, Moabites, something like that. She's not from Jew. She's not from Israel. And she entered that thing by that decision that your God will be my God, your people will be my people. That's all. Even though there's nothing physical for me to join myself to you. But this is a bad story. And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth, what time was this? This is the time for kings to go where? To battle. What was David doing at home? You see, we said positioning is what? Being at the right place at the right time. And this year, you have to be at the right place at the right time. The decisions that you are making must not be informed by physical things. He felt that there was comfort. He felt that he had enough, they were not generous. When you talk about Joab, when you talk about those 30 mighty men, when you talk about the three, there were powerful people there. If you check 1 Chronicles chapter 11 and verse 12, you will see a, chron a chronology of mighty men that were following him. There was no reason for him to go to war again. But the Bible says this was not the time for generous to sit at home. And he sat at home, and that positioning, <laughs> that positioning led him to trouble. Praise the Lord. We can talk about Ruth's wife, Lord's wife. What was the position? She, 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 she looked, the same place that she looked at was where Abraham was looking towards. Nothing happened to So it, it, there's something relative about positioning. You cannot look at the person beside you to judge what your positioning should be. Amen. Amen. Positioning is the key to all success. So if we talk about Bill Gates today, I'm telling you, there was what? Positioning his life. There must be somewhere he, he, for example, you can be in church and God will just tell you, prostrate. You say prostrate. In front of everybody. Just prostrate where you are or kneel down. And it is when you kneel down, that position is when you will hear the voice of God. He will not speak to you when you are standing. You see me sometimes, I will just go. I tell you some of the best times I've had God in this church is when I listen to those instructions. Immediately I go down, it's like a vision board is open before me. I, I begin to see. And yet there are people here that God gave that instruction to and they didn't listen. And they went away. They think everything was normal. They missed divine timing. They missed positioning. They don't know the magnitude of the reward 
that would have come from that. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Tap somebody and say divine positioning. You didn't tap them. You just said it. Tap somebody and say divine positioning. So we want to look at in, in, in um, 20 minutes, hopefully, what are the keys? How do I position myself? Having understood what positioning is, we said positioning is alignment. Who are you supposed to be with? Where are you supposed to be at a particular time? Some people are supposed to be here now, hearing what you are hearing. They just missed it. I tell you, they just missed it. If we stop right now, you've heard something. If I don't go further, you've heard something. And they say it's nothing. And every time we say it is nothing, just like Opa left, who did Opa leave? Naomi. Opa left Naomi that day. She thought that she her life went down. Her life did not go down, but there was nothing unique. And that's how it is. When you don't do or you are not where you are supposed to be, everything will look okay. You will just not realize what you have missed. Let me give you another example. If David had gone to battle that day, he would not have known that he just missed what? A problem that will almost kill his family. Because sword entered the family because of that. He would not know. He would just look like he just went to war. They won. They came back. It's like one of those things now. We are asked. He just escaped something that will make Absalom to turn against him and be pursuing him and pursuing him out of the kingdom. He would not know. This is how subtle positioning can be, and people don't take it seriously. Yet is the secret. What you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> Number one, how do you position yourself? Now, these are simple things, and I'm sure that um, they will bless your life if you listen. Number one is very simple. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16. How do you position yourself? Number one is know your purpose on time. That is your first alignment. Know your purpose on time. I'm telling you, that is your first what alignment. That is your first positioning. This year, 2024, what would God have you do? How many of you know it already? You see, those of you that did not lift your hand shows that you are already not what positioned for 2024. How will you be? This is the what? The what? So you are living as life serves, as, as the okay, <laughs> serves. And the God that we serve is God that knows the end from the what? He never starts until he knows the end. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10. Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10. Can we read everybody? Want to go? Declaring. Everybody read again. Let's start again. Want to go? Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet what? It is the character of God never to start a year without you knowing what to expect or to do in that year. Once you know what God's plan for you for the year is, you are already what? Positioned. <laughs> I know you don't like it, but it's the truth. How would you not know that this year, because you, you will be like a shadow boxer. Anything that comes is what you take. You don't have a target. You don't have a goal. And that target is not your own target. It's what he has ordained for you. So there's a difference between calling and your assignment. It says many are called, but what? Why are few chosen? Because if, among all the people that are called, only people, few people have assignments for the year. What's your assignment? What does he want you to achieve this year? How will January end and you don't know what he wants you to achieve? So I'm waiting. But you just see that this is the God that we serve. He declares the hand from the what? From the beginning. You can't say that this year God wants me to have a car. You can't say this year God wants me to have achieved this. This year God wants me to have this amount. God wants me to work in this kind of miracle. You should, because that is now what will inform how you run your race. You, you can't run effectively if you don't know how the year has ended. You don't know. Let me show you a scripture. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16. It's a very popular scripture. But let me see if I can explain it in a way that can help you this evening. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16. 
We are talking about knowing what God has ordained for you this year, first of all. And that was what I was trying to share with you, I think, two Sundays ago. How to, maybe because, maybe I didn't explain, like, is it two Sundays ago? Two Sundays ago? That you should spend time? Because you, you can't fly blind. A gifted person that doesn't have an assignment, a rich person that doesn't have an assignment, a talented and intelligent student that doesn't have a goal, he doesn't have a target in mind. What's the point? Your first positioning, your first alignment key is knowing your purpose for the year. Not your long-term goal, but the one for the year. That's how to make 2024 counts. Praise the Lord. Everybody, let's read. Want to go? I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. That what? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant unto you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the what? In the knowledge of him. Verse 17. Verse 18. So notice, the eyes of your understanding mean what? Enlightened. That you may know what? It mentions three things, and those three things are in order. They are not arranged adversely. Don't think that the arrangement is without alignment. The arrangement that you have here is orderly. Number one, it says you will know the hope of his calling. Number two, it says you will know the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And number three, the exceeding greatness of his power towards us. What are we pursuing? What are we pursuing? Everybody say power. Everybody say power. You see, you want the manifestation of power. What is the power supposed to achieve? That's why he arranged it. In fact, some people don't go for power. Some people go for the manifestation of the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the day. Where is the money, your pastor? <laughs> There's something before the provision. What is before the provision? The hope, everybody say the hope of his calling. And one of the interpretations of that is the purpose for which he has what? Called you. What do you want to use the power for? Is it not for the assignments? What do you want to use inheritance for? You just want to live and wake up and sleep and say, I- I'm-, I'm flowing. <laughs> praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, hallelujah, better. Hallelujah. Number one, what is the hope of his calling? So the purpose of the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the first thing he has highlighted here is not so that you can know your wife. It's not so that you can know your husband. It's not so that you can know. <laughs> it's clear. You know, there's a way we, 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 we turn it and say, oh, what can the spirit of wisdom and revelation achieve for me today? <laughs> what is that? So the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Number one, that you can know the assignment that is God for you, 2024. So when you know that, <laughs> how do you now manifest the inheritance, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sin for that, and the power, the dunamis that is required to achieve that? Is that clear? Is that clear? Is that clear? What's number one again? Everybody want to go? Know what? Know what? Know your purpose on time. It's very key. You, you, immediately you know. He put part more and more wa more than study kini chemistry, you are already positioned. But you are in no way, you don't know your department, you don't know your, you don't know, you are, you are lost. But immediately you know that I am a part one student of chemistry, I will be studying chemistry 101, chemistry 104, chemistry this, you are positioned already. You are positioned. So it's not enough to be in the university. You have to know your assignment place. What does God want you to achieve in 2024? And I will not go through the route of two Sundays ago to show you how to get, but you need it fast. Everybody say fast. fast. Everybody say fast. fast. What's the purpose? Immediately you know that you'll be disciplined. Discipline will find expression in your life in 2024. You, you are not running another person's race. When you see somebody going in this direction, you are not moved. You are, not, you are not deterred by their success or failure or anything they achieve because you already have your portion set for you. So the reason you are looking at another person and bothered is because you don't have your own target which God has ordained for you. Simple. Immediately you know your race. Congratulations, bro. But this is my words. Oh, you are going to Canada. Praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. My destination is Germany or my destination is Ocean State. Why? Because there is clarity. You are running that race with efficiency. A person, if, if I, you are not fit to go into a relationship, if you don't know 
the hope of his calling. Everything you will do revolves around that assignment because you say, does this person fit the calling? Does this thing, watching movies every day, does it fit the goal? Doing this, or you, you begin to, to censor everything in your life based on that purpose that has been ordained for you, including the friends that you allow in your life. So by the end of 2024, you will not say, what was I doing with Brother John? <laughs> you, you will not be saying something like, ah, you, 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 you didn't know. You didn't know. Praise the Lord. So it will give you focus in terms of discipline, and it will give you consistency. Anytime you want to be swayed off, you will remember that that is not your assignment. You have been asked to sweep inside this auditorium, not that big auditorium. So when you are drawn away by the fancy that is there, you will remember and come back to where you have been asked to sweep. That is a person that is aligned. Remember, alignment is divine positioning in terms of place and time. And you are in the perfect will of God. Not in the good, not in the acceptable, but in the what? The perfect will. Number two. You are looking at, that's another. <laughs> Number two. I already mentioned this, but this will help you. Making 2024 count. Please take it seriously. Cultivate a life of obedience to divine instruction in your business, in your relationship, in your spiritual life. Cultivate a lifestyle of what? Obedience to divine what? Instruction. Everybody say divine instructions. Divine. Judges chapter 13 and verse 4. Judges chapter 13 and verse 4. If you follow this one alone, there are strong chances that by doing, you are, you are there. This one alone. A person that listens to, look, there are things that we call generic instructions. And there are things that are called specific words, instructions. Has your family ever been eating and God tells you, don't join them to eat today? <laughs> and the soup with them, they eat for that day. Nobody, nobody is small. Maybe in a pan, they down and cook that. Wait, why are not go chop? But that instruction came to you. And what do people do? They jettison it. Just like the simple one I told you that all of us are in the church and we are worshiping God, we are lifting hands, and the Lord says, Lie down now. Lie down now. You say, Ah, we lash for ye. Ah, for ye. Ah, oh my God, you. Oh my God, you. You see, that argument, I lay on the floor like that. I think the last time I did it. Let me tell you what I saw. For the first time, the angel that worked with me was changed. I saw him. I knew that he was changed. He told me at the beginning of December, the last year, that he was by bad nothing. When I lay I saw two things. That one and another one, which I will not tell you. That's the first time I knew that angel can wear suits. You know, <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it, that's the appearance. Don't you, you know there are different forms and all of that. But that was the appearance in which he, he came in a, in a milk colored, milk colored. Your your jacket is close to, but it's lighter than your your vest. He came in a milk colored, and the shirt was white, and the tie, and he wore a thick out bed. And my bed, I can't describe it. If I had stood, and just say. Praise the Lord. Praise, what was the song that we were singing? We let I no go see nothing. Because I was not in alignment at that part. Your life, you look, instructions are the secret to success. It's simple. What set of instructions are you running by? After the assignment has been given to you, you will be given instructions to follow. And it is in your interest to fully follow those instructions. I sent a message to somebody to be here just now, and they are here now. They may not like it, but that was what? I, I, don't, I don't know why, why, why I sent down. Why, why did I send the instruction? I, I, I don't know. I typed it, and I came straight to, to talk here. I don't know. But that's how things happen. That's how. Instructions that are specific for you. The instructions that were given to Samson, Judges chapter 13. Are, are we there? 
verse 4 and verse 5. Can we read? Now therefore I beware, I pray thee, and drink not what? This is, this, is the, this is the angel talking to the mother. Okay? No strong drink, and eat not anything unclean. Verse 5. For lo, thou shalt conceive a bear a son, and no razor shall what? Is it for everybody in Israel? Is that true for everybody in Israel? Have you heard that all things are lawful, but not all things are what? Expedient. It's not a sin to, it's not about sin and no sin now. It's about what has been ordained for you for the year. It can tell you that every first of January for your business, fast. Why do you not get instruction? No, 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 think about it. Why? Why? Was it by accident that John was wearing, what was John wearing? Uh, waiting, whatever he was wearing, and eating locust and uh, honey. Was it by accident? Even the food that Jesus would, would eat was prophesied in Isaiah. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. The food that Jesus was going to eat was prophesied in Isaiah. That place where I showed you the other time about Emmanuel, God with us, is there. It's also on Instructions. Stop somebody and say instructions. What instructions have you been given? He can tell you that every first clinical clinical so seed to he can say, come to church alone and come and pray here. If you go and pray at the campground, you are on your home. The instructions are that specific. If you, are, you are doing the prayer in your room or at the campground, you are not at the right place at the right time. And your success is not going to be by the Spirit if you succeed. And this is the problem of many believers. It's not that they are doing anything bad, but just to hear those instructions that look silly, like what is in here? Razor, make razor, no touch, will not hear forever. And that was one thing he could not watch. When he lost it, he learned how to pray. <laughs> he learned how to pray. Shuri, inside your instruction is your safety. Write it down. Inside your instructions. In, inside your instructions is your safety. Inside your instruction. What are those instructions? He can tell you to come and clean the chairs. Nobody, make nobody know. Come and be cleaning the chairs in the church. It's not for show. Sure. And I don't know why we tell you that. I don't know why we tell you that. That is different from the assignment we are talking about. These are now what instructions. Amen. Ask somebody, what are your instructions this year? My time is over. <laughs> What's the answer? What's the answer? Along with the instruction, the only instructions they have are the ones that the church has imposed. That is a person that does not have a relationship with God. The only instructions you have are the ones that, like, come to church for brothers and out. Come to church. Come to church where? Come to church on Tuesday. <laughs> Do you understand? The only instructions you have are the ones that are given by the church. You don't have a relationship with God. It certainly will give you instructions. <laughs> What are the types of instruction? I don't know. <laughs> let, him be the, let him be the judge of that. Number three. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. This one is be sensitive to timings of the Spirit. Be sensitive to timings of the Spirit. See, this 2024, it's not every day that is the same for you. I tell you. There are timings, and you have to be very sensitive. You will know that a lot of money will come more. You can confess all that time. <laughs> money will come, but it will not be like those specific pockets. You must maximize the pockets when they come. And that's what people do. When the pocket of opportunity of wealth comes, say it will be there forever. Glory to God. 
no, 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 he goes to bed. He goes to bed. He goes to bed. He to push the advert out and now make, make it. It's like there's, there's a portal open for me at this time. This time to get more orders. More orders. He says, let me, let me take two and rest. He, 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 can't, he can't discern that this is his time. He can't discern. This, look, read it. Everybody read. What? Verse 11. Verse 11. You will know the time that your business will boom. You will know the time that revelations will come to you like crazy. It's not every day. There are times that you will see that you are bombarded with a lot of revelations which you never saw before. You must be sensitive at those moments to now keep it. Ah, this is my time. He says, I returned and I saw now the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor riches to... Who, who, who should the race be for? Who should the battle be for? Who should have the bread? Who should have the bread? Who should win the battle? Is it not the strong? He says two things happen. Timing and what? Chance. Today is the day that five customers will come. That's the day you no go, no go shop. <laughs> that's the day. That's the day you you close. So somebody has spoken to you. You you close. You come tomorrow and confess. One customer will now come. You say praise the Lord. You will not. You will, just as we are saying, you would not have known that you missed what yesterday. Five. When the angels were coming. Lot was sitting down at the gate. You want to go there? Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. The same thing, Genesis chapter 18, verse 1. They were there. Timing. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1. Timing. When the three men were coming, he said he saw them afar. Go, Genesis chapter 18, verse 1. The same thing, Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 18 is Abraham. Genesis chapter 19 is Lot. Positioning. If they were inside the house, they don't go see the person they come. Positioning. Timing and you are saying, look, the mark that your time has come is revelation. If what I'm sharing to you now, you are receiving revelation, it means there's something. Because every time there's revelation, there's manifestation that must follow. If you are sleeping right now, it means it's not your time. Do, do, do you understand? <laughs> no, 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 it's very simple. It means that is that you have postponed it yourself or it's not your time. One of the two. And when you miss, you know, timing is kairos for God. The, the timing of God is kairos. It's not chronos. It's timing. It's a cycle. And that cycle can be every three weeks or can be every five years. So for some people, it's 10 years or 11 years. It's different. No matter the prayer they pray in between, you will now go and marry the person where you're not supposed to marry. When the person where God will make you now marry, you now have no seal. And your time, your biological time is clicking. You will now push yourself. You, you leave the perfect will, you enter into acceptable or what? Or good. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, if what I'm saying you don't understand, two things. You see that you have shut yourself out or it's not your word. Every time there's revelation, every time God wants to change your life, he will give you what? Revelation. The, the pointer to your timing is revelation. Anytime new revelation hits your spirit, it means something must change. For example, you say, hey, so, so I don't have to sow to, to eat and to have clothes. You know, some people were joking with it. <laughs> but for another person, it was what? Every time there's revelation to you, it means there's something to change. And revelations will come Basically, through three ways. Number one, what point are we talking about? Timing, right? Be sensitive to timing. Number one, persecution time. The flood of revelation that will hit you during that persecution time, not crazy. <laughs> Have you been persecuted before? <laughs> the, the, the flood. I know we might, might. I know we might, might. Number two, when you have the hodge to pray, sense, it will not be every time, but there are times that you will see that there's a burden that has rested on your shoulders. 
What people do is they watch a movie away. They, they watch it away a movie. <laughs> There's a way movies we, we replace that body. You will think that body is a problem for you and you substitute it with a what? With a Netflix movie. You just shut yourself down. You now wonder at the end of 2024 that how, how did I? What happened? Wait till I write. Wait till I, no, You don't watch how me wait. You don't want to tell me the body came because you want to give back. That business is about to go to the next level. So the body of prayer came at that time. You say, I don't get time. Make I go. Number three. Number one is persecution. When persecution hits you powerfully, it's a time to shift gear. Number two is a body for prayer. Number three is when you are hard to give. <laughs> I will still come back to this giving one. <laughs> there are plenty we don't miss out for them. <laughs> they don't want, they, they don't want here. Make I give. <laughs> ah, everything. I know they give up. When you are pressed to give something, you're about to change. It's your pointer to a change of status. Something's about to change in your life. There's a blessing that is reserved for givers. In fact, revelations come to give us. You know the story in Luke chapter 7. They said this man is worthy of this blessing. They said he has built us a synagogue. But he didn't stop at that. This is the same man that now said, don't come to my house again. Only speak the word. He was not among them. Even the people that were falling, they know, they know of that kind of revelation. Say, only speak. I said this, I've not seen a great faith like this in history. What's my one again? Eh? Persecution. What's number two? Body to pray. What's number three? What? Eh? Yeah. All these three things are summed up inside one thing. What did I call it? I said revelation. Everybody say revelation. The three will drive you to revelation. The giving will drive you to revelation. Through the prayer, you will come to revelation. Through the persecution. Can we look at persecution? He said the light affliction that we're having is for what? It's for a short time, right? He said it is working in us a what? A far more eternal weight of glory. Why we look not at the what? It means God will show you things that are not seen. Why that thing is, you can't sleep. The pressure is much. Something is happening to you. That refining is taking place. It's like I can't bear this weight. This pain is much. If you stay there, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a transformation, metamorphosis that we, you will press into a certain kind of revelation. And it's that revelation that will change you. So it's not the persecution itself that will, it must produce. Revelation is the way to change. It is so. Your eyes must be open to what? Anything that has no see, forget that. Anything where, do you understand revelation? Anything that is not in your revelation, forget it. And the way you know the liberty God is giving you is the kind of revelation is pushing your way. For example, when it shows you that you can take it as a territory in terms of your business, it goes, you, go, you go see how. You will just have a sense that, wow, I'm all over it. So the other half may be confessing, you don't see anything. <laughs> you don't see confess. But you wait on see how. You, you, there's, there's, there's a furnishing of truth in your heart based on that revelation. So it can come through any of the three ways. There are special pressures to help you. The giving, the prayer time, and the persecution. Revelation happens normally. Do you understand? Don't, 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 don't get me wrong. Go. But I'm saying that there are certain that come via these ways. This year, have you been pushed to give an amount you have not given before? Do you see? Do you see? You are living a luminous Christian life. Me, I've been pushed this year to give an amount that Oh, yeah, I can't tell you. And then I wanted to sow it here. He said, No, this is to me. This, this one looks like the father. It, it don't happen to you before. <laughs> it don't happen to you. Say, this one looks to me like the father. Papa, no, I, I want that. <laughs> if you sow here, you have missed it. Even though it was painful for you to do, you didn't listen. Oh, yes. 
And when you do it, you will see faith furnished in your heart. You are ready for 2024. It doesn't matter what you face. It's different from the person that is confessing a law and he's saying that 2024, I don't conquer you. You are not the same. In fact, this one may be sleeping. This one, we don't give. <laughs> and this other one is, I'm telling you. And he will look at that one as a lazy, as a lazy Christian. But what he has done, the weight in the spirit is not the same. When the two of them are weighed in the spirit, they are not the same. Because this one has despised that which he has been instructed to do. And he thinks he can make up for it by what? By his confession, his sacrifice. To obey is better than to what? Sacrifice. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to you? These are the ways we prosper by the Spirit. This is the way. So when I come to the altar and I say, 2024 is set for me. It's not. <laughs> yes. The faith has to have a what? A basis. I don't cry for secret. Say, this money. Baba, I need a. <laughs> At this hour, I don't cry. For you, it may not be money. It may be. The prayer body, I tell you. You go does here. Lock up three days. They are, I know we'll go to office. Then go sack me for office. <laughs> you, can, you may not hear another further instruction. It is left to you to find the time. Ah, you know, do I, you know, go, you know, be saying your leg will go break, or you go, you, you go say, ah, now because I don't pray. <laughs> My leg, not, no, it go look normal. I told you, if David had gone to battle that day, he would not have known that he missed meeting Bathsheba that would destroy the family. He would not have known that he just missed it. If Ruth had left that day and gone, she would never have known that she just missed being the grandmother of Jesus. Imagine the things you have missed. Not only you, including me. But the Lord have mercy. <laughs> the, the, oh, yeah. It's true. It's true. Like I could have left Christ with ministries. Do you get it? Because of um, pain. Oh, things. That's why I told you, you never look at physical things to determine these things. There was nothing in Naomi that would make Ruth to follow her. Nothing. Three people were dead. This is a killer. You are the next person. Ah, the husband died. The two children will follow that. Who is the next person? Now look for... Praise the Lord. Yeah. The people that were in the same boat with Jonah. What happened? What happened? <laughs> the Christian that is friends with the cultist. I remember when I was in university, um, Elisha. I first attended Elisha before I went to. So. There were some people that were cultists. I mean, I, 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 I was from a religious. <laughs> so I wanted to have experience. <laughs> you, you know, feel like that before. Thinking the next prayer is bad boy. Ah, I don't know, flow. Bad, bad. <laughs> Surely. That was meant for about to go in the sitting room. Those guys. My heart. <laughs> Why? Why? If the opposite court group enters. What will happen? You don't get it. You don't get what I just said. No? All of us will be inside. We'll be gisting. They'll be talking. We went to these people. We dealt with them. Hey! But there was palpitation in my heart. Because I knew that if anybody from another group enters with a go, we are go to I don't get what I don't get that. I was, I'll be dead. Wrong positioning in terms of people around you is key. 
So you have fantastic vision. But the people that you have surrounded yourself with are the wrong people. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1. Let me stop. Have you? My time is up. I'll round off now. I'll round off now. I'll keep the other three. The last one is the most powerful. <laughs> when now I keep it. Everybody, yeah? read Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man. We take it to amplify. The, the amplified you have is the compact one. It's not the original amplified. You know there are two types of amplified. The AMPC is not AMP. It's, it's different versions. Do you have the AMP? Try it down. Maybe it's the same. I don't know. Try it down. You can, you can, you can read it like this. Everybody say positioned. Just, you, you get that word blessed. Change it to what? Positioned. Can we read now? Everybody, let's read. Want to go? Positioned is the man that what? In the what? In the council of the... Un- un- no what? No what? The wrong people are a problem. The wrong people are a problem. The wrong omoshe is... A, oh, yeah. The wrong the wrong pastor, the wrong friend, the wrong partner, the wrong wife, the wrong husband, the wrong teacher, the wrong what else? The problem. When you have the vision lined up and the person that is always beside you, you are not well, you are not well positioned. Somebody that's always mocking pastors. You not talk, but you did there. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? You are not the one talking. You are the recipient. It's it's multifaceted. Praise the Lord. How many points? Sir? I think that's okay. Let me mention the other ones, but no explanation. Your best, let me go to the last one. Your best positioning is in meditation. Now, this one, I can explain it for two hours. <laughs> I can explain it for two hours. Your best positioning, your, your strongest positioning is in your meditation life. And three things happen in your meditation life. Stillness, See, S E E I N G, and speaking. That's three S's. What's my one? Everybody says stillness. Everybody says stillness. Everybody must consistently have moment of stillness. Number two is what? Seeing. You are deliberately seeing the end of 2024, what you have achieved consistently. There should be no 24 days without this. I mean, 24 hours without this. Number three is what? Speaking. So what you have seen, you bet it. After seeing it, you bet it with your mouth. Every 24 hours. In fact, day and night. So I've seen that my business is going to be this. So can you see it? After stillness. Can you see it for 30 minutes? Can you see that successful business for 30 minutes and then you speak it? That's the summary of meditation. What's meditation again? Number one is what? Still, everybody says stillness. stillness. What's number two? See. What's number three? Speaking. If you understood those three, you know what meditation is about. You know what meditation is about. You will, your heart, everybody touch your heart. It's what matters in 2024. If this thing is not crippled by fear, you will do it. <laughs> if this place is not crippled by what? You will do it. Many things, you are doing it in fear. When you should be doing it out of persuadedness. You are not doing it out of persuadedness. You are doing it out of... 
And what will give you that persuadedness is what? Meditation. Everybody say meditation. meditation. Everybody say meditation. meditation. Can we speak now? Remember, it is stillness and what? And what? You can do it while standing. You can do it while sitting. You can do it while lying down. How do you do it while standing? The one that I believe the one that Isaac did in, in, in Genesis 24 verse 63, I think he was standing. I think. I think. It's subject to your interpretation. But I think he was standing. You can do it walking up and down. I come to this place to do it. I don't have to sit. So you walk. You walk. What are you doing? You are still and you are what? You are not seeing this. You are not seeing the TV. You are not seeing. What are you seeing? So if sleeping will disturb you, on, if sleeping will disturb you on the chair. No, as you are there, you are, you are seeing America. What is what does the map of America look like? You have you have crammed it. You have memorized the the image of American map. You have seen Africa. When it enters here, you will know. You are now talking. I'm here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What is thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus, to what you are what? So your business has produced 78,000 naira within two weeks. And you are looking at 78,000 naira in your, on your phone. Your phone not in your hand. We are looking at your phone right now. And the alert that drops came from a businesswoman that is negotiating with you. And your response is what? Thank you, what? Thank you. So the people around you here, thank you, Jesus. They don't see the thing where that is. Every day, this book of the law shall not depart out of their mind. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. You are positioned for success. You are positioned for success. You are not a nominal Christian. You are not the regular Christian. You are a, a Christian that knows exactly what is what. You are, a, you are a deliberate planter. You are a gardener that knows exactly how to cultivate their garden and produce fruit. Lift your hands and give him thanks. Lift your hands and give him thanks. Manda baradandesh, rekete sunta, mamba ragada bahaktosh, mekto brani mo sunte, jende kete zina manderi agabarande, rekete sunta, mamba ragada bahakto vrekute veli mandesh, jemboro sokte vremene kinta bande, o jaba barada hakte ligavala bande, lembro godo zunta lama. Can you speak into 2024? It's a blessed year for me. Glory to Jesus. It's the year of the new. It's the year of the new. I see new things. I see new things. I see new things. I see, new things. I see whatever it is that God has spoken to you. I, I see new things. I see new things. Mandaraba hakte. I see new things. I see new things. Manko tosuta ima barande soteli gavale andorosha mamra kata bahakte. I see new things. I see new things. It's the year of glory. It's the year of glory. I walk in faith as I go about my business. As I read my books. As I practice that which God has ordained. I see success. I'm attending to by success. Glory to God. I, success is my companion. I, success is my companion. Mande liga palande. Rememende zembero godo sunta. Makta brahma namande. Repetende riabara. Ajadada. Glory to Jesus. Can you mention your business and name it and say this year according to the word of the Lord. I, I prosper. I prosper. I prosper. This year I'm married. This year I have this. This year I complete this program. This year I have this result, uh, just name it, just name it, and see a name, and see a name, and see a name, and see a name, and see a name. Remember, no so teli kabara na mahande. Remember, no so kapara da bahate lega de dia. I'm positioned correctly this year. I'm at the right place at the right time. I'm at the right place. I'm divinely positioned. I'm divinely positioned. I'm not a shadow boxer. I know exactly what I'm doing this year, and I'm pursuing it with passion and pursuing it with glory 
I'm pursuing it with, with, with audacity, knowing that the Lord is with me. It is the vision that the Lord has granted unto me, and I'm running with it today. I'm running with it this year. I'm running with it every month in the name of Jesus, and I make this year a success. I make this year a success. Say it like that. I make it a success. I make this year a success. It's a successful year for me. I declare it by the by the by the decree of the watchers in the name of Jesus. Mendo Soteli Caparada Hate. I see as God sees. I see the things God wants me to see. I see according to divine instruction and the determinate counsel of the law that 2024 should go. I'm starting with the end in mind, knowing that God declares the end from the beginning, and I'm declaring the end from the beginning that this year, this is the amount of money we are having in this business. This year, this amount of money I'm going to save. This year, this amount of money I'm going to invest. This year, according to what God has shown me, this is what my business will produce in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody speak. Just speak and speak and speak and speak. The name of Jesus. Let's continue to decree and declare. Let's begin to name it. Continue to name it. Continue to name it. That thing that you, the Lord has, that thing that the Lord has revealed unto you, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. Amen. You can have your seat. Can you appreciate the man of God that has blessed us? If you are doing it, do it well. If you are doing it, do it well. Have you been blessed this evening? Please have your seat. You see, it is rare to hear this kind of words that comes with so much clarity. Many churches don't do this kind of a thing. Many churches don't have the opportunity that we are enjoying in Christ's Church House, and we appreciate God for the gift of men. Praise the Lord. I don't know if you have questions. Maybe uh, when the pastor was speaking, uh, there is a particular question that dropped in your heart. Please, I want you to uh, raise up your hand and come and ask your question. Okay. First person. Who else has a question? I also have a question to ask. So who else? Okay. Minister Bolu, you can come forward. Um, thank you, Pastor, for thank you, Pastor, for the teaching, sir. Uh, my question is this: we um, we talking about timing. When you realize that it seems like some pockets are opened at a particular time, and based on what has been shared today, probably you start thinking it's not going to be there for so long. How do you guard your heart and your mind at that point? In other words, how do I keep looking at my parts being as the shining light that keeps shining brighter and brighter? How do I reconcile the two? The idea that this might not be like um as it is right now forever and also thinking this has to get better i'm not sure i understood your question are you trying to ask if there is a disparity between the concept of timing and the concept of the part of the justice like a shining light yes sir when you understand the meaning of the expression the part of the jaws is like a shining light and that enters your mind when you see those pockets of timing you cannot miss it you find yourself in alignment with your timing. it will happen that is why it says this book of the law shall not depart out of your mind but thou shalt meditate there in day and night that thou mayest observe to what to do. you find yourself doing according to all that is written then you make your way prosperous. You find yourself hitting, I mean, when you're supposed to get up, something just pushes you, you get up at the right time, and you send that application 
<laughs> it, it will happen continually, except you lose. You, they are not, I, I, they are not I, opposite I each other at all. I what that one will do is keep you in time. Yes, you will not miss it. All right. Thank you, sir. Who else has a question? Okay, this is my own question. Um, there is this uh, urge in my heart that it seems as if I, I, I don't know my assignment, I don't know my message, I don't know what exactly God wants me to do. What can I do? As a matter of fact, I've listened to different messages addressing this matter, but I still have that kind of emptiness in me that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. What advice do you give to such person? Praise the Lord. First of all, I refer you to that message. Go, on, go and watch. <laughs> Why is this to not stand? Second, that scripture that we read makes it express. It says that the Lord will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the words. The highest of your understanding in words. That you may what? If you don't want to do the one that I told you to do, that means go and lock yourself. Look, lock yourself away for 24 hours. Put a pen next to you and put, write it on, on the, on, what do you want me to do 2024? Put question mark, sit down. You are bored, sleep. When you wake up, no comfort, stay. 24 hours, come out, answer no, no, no call. Take Gary or take Kuli Kuli, sit down there, no come out, stay. The answer, but people don't have, they are looking for shortcuts, they are looking for fast, yes. First of all, go by the prayer of Brother Paul. He says, he will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the, the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may know. So if you want to go by every day, but it will take you a longer time, depending on how you can get that prayer answer. So I pray today, Lord, grant me the spirit of wisdom and revelation according to that prayer, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, that I may know the hope of my calling. You go to work, you come back, you pray it again. At a point, you may have a dream. At a point, somebody can speak to you and it will resonate. There's nobody anybody says. If it does not resonate with what is in your stomach, it's not for you. So it will resonate with what is in your stomach. That is another way. But your quickest way, because you don't have time. Do you understand what we are saying? We are saying you should know the end from the beginning. This thing we are saying, you should have known it from December 7th. December last year, we are quoting what 2024 is about. So you cannot go through that route. You have to lock yourself up and say, I'm not leaving this place <laughs> except 2024 is clear to me. And remember, day after day, authors what? Night after night reveals what? Knowledge. It means that you are more likely <laughs> to know even at night. There are, I tell you, night times. If you are busy at work, you can say from, it's a decision, from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m., I will be awake. And what am I waiting for? What to do in 2024? The next day, you will know. Put that paper, you will know. You will know. You will know the things you should achieve this year. You will know. Now, laziness be the problem of Christians. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sorry. <laughs> Just um, to add to what he has said. Now, I, I don't personally have an issue with this, but I just thought I should ask. At the point where this year now, 2024, I have about six, seven things specifically that God had said. And somehow, they seem to have been what I have been prepared for for the past four years or so. And I find myself doing things that are exclusively different from what I'm meant to do this 2024. How do I bring everything together? Do I drop these things? Do I take them together? Like, how should a person approach? Now that you know, even with further clarity, what 2024 is for, okay. how do I approach the things I've been doing? The, I think the Yoruba they use is giant, no, no, no. Jama, Jama or Maybe I didn't like get that. the antecedent. You were already familiar with a protocol. Um, then that protocol was sub, sub, was changed or what? Let me put it this way, sir. Um, you, like you said, like you instructed, sir, I'm there, I got my instructions. Okay. And from seeing the things listed there, I know 
that I am ready to take on these things. Over the years, I've been prepared, but they are different from what I am doing right now that I thought would have been my focus coming from the past year. And you change, you know, that means you were not, you were not doing the right thing. You know, it's simple. Or, you know, as you ask for the assignment, you can also ask for the instruction right there. What instructions are you to carry out to fulfill the assignment? It can be driven. And if it is different from the one that you are, you don't have a choice. What you go do? Let me give you an example. I don't want to give you personal example so that there was a time that I had the instruction to be to be dancing at 12 o'clock midnight. It, it, it's a very funny instruction. And at a point, it, it, it changed. So I, I should stick with dancing. So I, I'm not sure I understood your question, but I'm just saying, if this is what he's telling you to do, whatever he tells you to do. Maybe I should put it this way, sir. Um, thank you, sir. Maybe I should put it this way. There is some. There is an assignment this person has been on that's caught into 2024. There is a new assignment, a new instruction in 2024. If it takes the two together, it most likely will feel overwhelmed. Oh, praise the Lord. Exactly, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What's the answer to that? It means your capacity has what? Increased. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Uh, it, it, that has happened to me this year. Do you understand? Yes, it sir. simply means your capacity, and it will give you the wisdom. You know, there's always a wisdom to undo every. Yes. It will give you the wisdom to manage. Yes, it will always. There's a wisdom you can engage and do the two task. For example, TH6 is wisdom. It, it, it will give you the wisdom. TH6 is wisdom. So I've not faced you since. <laughs> I ran away. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> Did you get so that I can compress or save my. It will give you the wisdom to manage the two. The one that we are dealing with is the one that made a thief treasurer. No wisdom. Okay, don't worry. Who is it? Who is the thief that is the treasurer? <laughs> Because the money will not finish. <laughs> I mean, now, eh, how will you make a TV a treasurer? Eh, it will give you wisdom. It will give you wisdom. Oh, yeah? Thank, Thank, you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Sister, are you happy to go past all of that challenge?